Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Proactivity 2000 Series PLC CPU display. Now the Proactivity Series 2000 and 3000 CPUs and remote controllers have OLED LCD displays. These can be used to display messages or convey information to the operator, maintenance, or programmer. The information can be system errors and information or user-defined messages programmed through ladder logic. We will be looking at the CPU OLED LCD display on the Proactivity 2000 PLC. The eight control buttons will be used to display the inputs and outputs for troubleshooting. System parameters like real-time clock can also be viewed um, and set using the CPU display and control buttons. Custom messages displayed will be programmed in ladder logic. This will include scrolling messages and display tag information. So let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So what is a OLED display? Now an OLED display stands for organ Organic Light Emitting Diode. Light is produced by applying an electrical current through an organic thin film material. This makes the um, information easier to read, in my opinion, over an LC or liquid crystal display. The liquid crystal display uses a backlight to show which areas are blocked or not. The OLED lights the material itself, showing a better contrast for the information. So the uh, Proactivity 2000 series PLC CPU display. Now the P2 550 CPU incorporates a four line by 10 character OLED for system alarms information and for displaying user defined messages. OLED characters are seven by 12, which is 1.72 millimeters by 2.94 millimeters with a dot pitch of 0.245. Now the OLED control buttons located beneath the display allow the user to navigate through menu items. And these buttons also permit local configuration of time and date settings. For user to find messages, the display is configured using the Productivity Suite programming pack software. A display page instruction dialog box allows the user to program text into user defined tags and display the messages based on the programming um, of the latter logic execution. There is a built in timeout for the P2 OLD for four hours. Only a button press or power up will turn it back on. This will prolong the life of the display unit on the CPU. So the P2000 CPU OLD display navigation. So on here, we will see that we have eight control buttons and they are the um, menu, escape, select and enter. And we have the four arrow buttons. And this relates back to a chart that we can see here to navigate all of the different displays. So if we actually look at our hardware that we have here, and you can see that here is my display and we are currently in the stop mode. You can see it actually says stop mode on here and the display is quite nice. Um, you also see my eight buttons. So, what we'll do first is take a look at time format. So if we look at that, we'll hit the menu button and then we will use the arrow button to scroll down to where we see date. Then we can hit enter. And then what we'll do is go down to the change format. Again, enter. We'll do the date format and what you'll see is in order to tell where your cursor is, you'll see the uh, one light flashing on and off. So here we're on date. So we'll hit select and we will cursor down. So we have right now we have month, day, year. We're going to go year, month, day and we'll hit select. It puts a asterisk beside it. So now we are set. We can then um, escape out of that and go back or we can just hit menu and go back to the main menu again. So that's a very easy way of looking at the 
um, options that we have for the operator. The other thing we can do is actually monitor I.O. So let's go down and we'll go to monitor using the arrow key. And once we're on monitor, we can then hit uh, enter. And we have user ID or IO data. We'll use IO data, enter, and our type. We're going to do digital input or DI. So we'll select that. And now what it's telling us is the backplane and the point value. This is slot number three. This is one, two, and three. So we're talking about our simulator input card here. And we have currently have point number four. So we'll just hit select on that one. And right now, as it's monitoring, you can see the value is now off. And if I go down to point number four and turn that on, then we'll see it comes on. This is a very good troubleshooting aspect because when I look at it, I know that the input light is lighting up and I know now that the CPU is actually seeing that input. So the only third thing to try is the, that I get my meter, meter out and actually see if I have that voltage coming into that simulator. So a very good way of troubleshooting all through an easy CPU monitoring. Now in order back to the main menu, we'll just hit escape and again it goes back by one, hit the main menu and then we can hit escape and it goes back to our main uh, stop mode here. Now in order to, and you can see how we did that within our chart, the exact steps and the steps for monitoring the IO, as well as the description of our OLD, OLED control buttons. So now what we'll want to do is we want to display um, some information onto it by the program. So we'll go back to our existing program that we created last time in documentation and we have our start stop. And what we want to do is we want to display a scrolling message on the top line. Remember we have four lines of code. The second one we'll look at the motor and the status of the motor and then the status of the start and stop signal. So the first one here, what we'll do is set up our scrolling message and we're going to use the extract string command. So our source will be called OLED and we're going to put the information we want on that or in that string character. In our case here, we're going to put in ACC automation and then the web address. Then what we're going to do is we're going to start our start index. It will come from our display index here. And the display index actually comes from our timer. So we have several different characters here. We're going to go through 52 seconds and each one is going to pick up the start index a little differently. So what it will do is simulate it scrolling that message across the screen as it picks up the latest 10. Because we extract the string, it's the number of 10 of them. So, and we just do that by a simple timer and our time base rate is one second right here. So what that will do is now uh, give us a scrolling message. Next, what we'll do is we use pack string in order to show values that we have. So the pack string in our case here, what we're gonna do is take the source, which will be motor equals and then we're going to actually take the motor contact itself and display that with one, a length of one because it's going to be zero or one being on or off. Okay. Then what we'll do is we'll, and we put that as a destination motor string. Then we have a pack string again for our start and we have a pack string again for our stop. Then what we have is our um, LCD display uh, instruction and on that we have again four lines those four lines are going to be the OLED, OLED display which is from our scrolling message the second one is our motor string start string and stop string so that is what we should see now on our display and then we have our end statement which is the end of the program so very simple program but a powerful inf 
powerful tool for your toolbox in order to display information and show it quite quickly to the operator without connecting to the programming software itself. So currently right now I'm in the stop mode. We will switch this to the run mode. And when we do, what you'll see is that we have our motor, our start and our stop. And now we have our message scrolling across the top of the screen. We can actually control our motor now. We'll turn on the run. And when we do, you'll see the start is now on. The motor is now on as well, or one. We'll turn the start off. And you'll see the motor remains on, just like our program does. And then we'll turn on the stop. And when we do, the motor stops. So again, it tells us exactly what's happening within the controller at all times. And we'll turn that back on again. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription box to receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.